happens. They hit the ground and there's a deer in a headlight moment where a lot is... Hi, this is Shadi and today I want to discuss the takedown. I often talk about it being a fight ender on the street. However, on the mats, there is a great value to it if your goal is the ground. Um, I know that you know you can be a world champion without knowing a single takedown, but there is a I would say mental and psychological element to the takedown that can put you ahead even if it's only sub uh, rule uh, format. So today I want to talk about why the takedown has so much value more than people would think. So I'm gonna visit a few fights. Here you can see Koji Komuro against a BJJ black belt in Japan competing and you can see the low stance avoiding so many things like the gripping and the takedowns and of course here you have your jumping guard pull very classical of BJJ which will actually against someone who knows their takedown you know uh, get rid of a lot of the worries that you have against takedowns and you can just engage in the ground fully but here you can see the moment without off the grips he attacks immediately with all sotogari and that puts him in the driving seat rather quickly let's see it here again um, in slow motion and you have that moment where that bjj guy was probably like okay wow what just happened and that was quick and he's startled and thus giving koji komuro all the time in the world to advance and put himself in this great position and ending the fight with a tap probably if they were rolling only the bjj guy would have a lot of advantage and a lot of more skill but due to that takedown and the deer in the headlight moment it changed everything here let's see koji komuro on the receiving end of the takedown so here against uh, suza um, a bigger guy and you can see here getting that takedown even if it ended in his guard clearly put koji in a i'd say bad mental state now, if I were to advocate for going to the ground directly via guard pool, it should be after a sincere uh, attempt, like a Yoko Tomoenage. In my opinion, that would be the only way to really allow a quote guard pull, because from it, you can do so many things. I've ended fights in arm bars from this position. Also, Dakiage should play a big role. It should also be a huge component, and it should be brought back whether it's Kosin Judo, Judo, BJJ, whatever. So Daki Age, the, the story behind it is that, you know, guard slamming is very dangerous and it is even on mats. However, back in the day, if you get that big lift, as you see here, it would count as Ippon because technically, if you can lift someone like this, um, you can technically slam them and just finish them. So here again, the martial element is very much apparent in the quote sport of judo and it should be maintained as such so daki age and guard pulls from a sincere uh takedown not false attacks or just straight guard pulls in my opinion they should be acceptable here you see again another takedown great takedown by Souza and gets that huge slam and obviously putting him in the driving seat so um you can clearly see or not necessarily see but i'm pretty sure that koji komuro here is startled and also feels like he is in big trouble even though the fight isn't nearly over and he's not completely passed and yet he was put in this mental state so i do believe that takedown has a mental uh, effect uh, putting you in the driving seat the deer in the headlight moment and here you can see after the takedown proceeds to pass not fully but yet enough to get the armbar and gets the tap so um, the takedown has a lot uh, to play uh, in a ground fight so to speak so uh, when i went to kosen judo and they told me that the the throw still is an ippon even though we can pull guard even though the emphasis is the ground that really showed me you know judo slash bjj in a whole new light because here you have this rule set that sure it emphasizes the ground you can go to the ground whenever you want you can pull guard even though i don't uh, support it it should be through legitimate uh, sutemiwaza attempts um, but nonetheless the takedown is still there the takedown is pretty much a huge threat because 
on the ground um, as you saw that also Togari it really puts you in a good position to just finish it that deer in the headlight moment or even if you end up in someone's guard like say a double leg um, that can also uh, really put them in a bad mental state uh, also uh, I used to think a lot about how we should do a um, team tournament you know every single year like the Kimura Cup idea that I proposed to Robert Drysdale um, which was basically a judo team versus a BJJ team on the anniversary of Elio Gracie versus Kimura fight you know one year maybe in Japan the other one is in the Maracana and you have you know a team versus team men's team and women's team whatever it may be and uh, the rule set in my opinion should be as simple as a Kosen rule set where the takedown can still end the fight which basically does not nullify judo's emphasis but at the same time you can go to the ground either through you know legitimate sutemiwaza or after a takedown attempt where maybe both of you are on the ground uh, for a reason it happens a lot in judo um, after a wazari you have to engage fully uh, guard pulls they should be uh, they should be disallowed in my opinion even though in Kosen rule set they are allowed um, Daki Age should be a thing and of course uh, you know classical leg locks like the knee bar and the straight ankle lock if you're working with the gi I don't know about heel hooks but um you know a very classical judo rule set where um, anything goes except for the guard pull of course and jumping guard because it's just super dangerous and it's a form of guard pull so uh, also another thing that um, the whole thing with the deer in the headlight moment this is something that I experienced myself when I first got my Aikido black belt and I wanted to transition and fight so I stayed in my club and my club had BJJ one of the best in France and they had a full schedule every day a couple of times a day so you can easily go and train every day so this is what I wanted because I felt like I wanted to make up for lost time the time that I was doing Aikido and not actually sparring so I was doing, I spent there like I would say around the entire summer before I uh, started judo with it and one day, you know, I knew zero takedowns obviously so one day the wrestler comes as in every gym and he took me with a high crotch single leg and it it kept me in this like haze for the duration of the of the round because it was really that impactful now granted he was bigger than me kind of like Susa and Komuro but still I I came to appreciate the effect of the takedown right then and there and I said whoa I should really do something that single leg I still remember it very well it was very eye-opening and it was one of the reasons why where I said okay no no I should still keep give judo a uh, a shot even though you know when you look online etc it was all BJJ and it seemed like BJJ was like the better than judo even though judo was my childhood art and then I said no no I should still go back and uh, you know, do judo and um, it was because of that takedown effect now uh, on the on the on the streets it's it's a completely different story you've seen those footage where someone gets hit with a anything like a double leg a harai goshi or anything or an osotogari and their body just goes limp and that's a, a huge other story of the takedowns and why it is so effective but on the mats to keep it short it's that during the headlight moment and also that mental pressure that you put on someone even if it's just two points or just submission only if you go and see uh, Galvon against uh, Gracie that coach Igari just puts him in the driving seat of the fight so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only the link will be in the description this was shady and thank you for listening